and as you may already have noticed I made a mistake naming this case uh, L30 but uh, handout suggests it should be Renzik so I'm just quickly redoing this and uh, just recreating this it's no big deal because I really didn't have much in this case anyway so this should be Renzik um, to fix it <clears throat> case number i'll just keep the same thing right here examiner and uh, notes uh, we can add uh, from our briefing forensic uh, dog napping scenario right here okay so we finish and it just goes through <clears throat> a few progress uh, boxes and uh, once it's done i'll quickly add the data source Once again, I choose disk image and uh, just pull the same data source to open here. Deselect all and uh, let this uh, process. Now I'm back to the place where I was and uh, the rest of our objectives uh, are here. So it's um, uh, pr primarily um, uh, focusing on data sources and this is the place in the tree where we have our data sources. So far we have uh, this uh, EO1 file. Uh, let me just uh, once again just mention the basics of the EO1 file organization. Okay, so apparently at some point there was a laptop Right, so there was this uh, laptop, a physical device, laptop, uh, somewhere, and it was imaged. So it had a hard drive, and it was imaged. So we created this image, which has this type EO1. E stands for NCASE. NCASE uh, is a popular uh, commercial forensic tool. And uh, when uh, the entire image of the drive is fitting in a single file, it creates a file named EO1. Uh, you can split the uh, creation of uh, NCASE uh, image formats into multiple files. Then the second file will be EO2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. Uh, and uh, typically you just specify the first file and the rest of the files are concatenated when they're loaded into a forensic tool. So here we already have this in place. And uh, when this hard drive of this laptop is imaged, uh, say we use this is FTK imager, for example, process, or in case also has an in case imager, another utility that uh, is available um, so when when this image is created and now we have the image of the drive so <clears throat> so its internal format like i mentioned it has the header block at the beginning with information about the case name examiner um, and uh, notes and all other uh, uh, case attributes then as it starts imaging this drive the next block and the rest of the blocks, all of the data blocks, are filled uh, with uh, parts of the image that is being imaged uh, by this process when this uh, type of file is created. And so these internal blocks right here, all, all these blocks, right, they correspond to actually the physical surface of the drive inside this laptop right and uh, so these are the 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 file uh, the blocks of data and when it's complete as the the imaging process keeps um, recalculating the hash values for verification purposes the last block right here will have all of these verification hashes md5 sha1 and uh, so this is another so this is called uh, a head block and a tail block uh, and uh, and so this is the actual format of the eo1 file so it has this type of structure so this is why um it's important that the actual image which is this part of the file right so this part of the file and by the way the this um, format allows to compress uh, the data 
because the data can be compressed very successfully, so that reduces the size of the EL1 file. But the hash values stored at the tail of this file EL1 basically is the hash value of this, right, which is the image of the original drive. However, so so we can we can extract it from from this EO1 fi file directly, but the entire EO1 file because of its heading and and ending and uh, this po possibly compressed uh, data part, um, its own hash value will be something else. And this is what we specified earlier on. Uh, in this handout when we uh, used uh, FTK Imager uh, to deal with all of these hash values uh, verification stages. All right, just wanted to clarify this process of uh, creation of EO1 file in its internal organization. Okay, so the first question is how many volumes this disk image have? So we have the disk image. Obviously, we can see this in 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 the tree, and you can count these volumes. There's there's quite a few of them, and uh, they all volumes correspond to file systems. Okay, so volumes correspond to file systems. File systems are hosted by volume. It's a typical term that we use in digital forensics and in general in uh, file system organization. And see, some of the volumes uh, uh, seem to be unallocated. So this can be on purpose. This can be just some slack space. This could be a deleted file system from, from the drive. So there could be different uh, situations. But um, you know, overall, uh, you see that uh, the volumes correspond to the file systems and you can uh, examine them individually. So here you can just count them and specify how many how many you have what is the name of the unallocated space and uh, you see that volume one just basically says unallocated and uh, right here the name shows up in the listing uh, in the detail section i will just pull this a little bit uh, closer to <clears throat> to your view and so this is the thing and uh, i mean you can always uh, go to perhaps file metadata and uh, find it directly yeah so this is um this is the name i guess this is the full name of it uh, we can potentially copy it right here we could just say Control c for example and uh, we can copy it right here so this is up to you i i think um, it was actually uh asking us about this this little part right here the actual name without this long path so i would just put it this it, it's fine this is clearly the name that we see uh, in the detail area right click on volume 7 and choose file system details so volume um, uh, 7 has some uh, information stored there and uh, uh, if we click on file system details you see that we have a dialog box that comes up because this was already processed and it's now stored in our database um, clearly um, uh, the file system is called ntfs so once again you can you can fill this in in windows open the case folder in file explorer and observe its contents what is the database called i have I have done this a few times already and you see that I have recreated the case and <laughs> named it properly according to the to the lab handout so it's called Renzik now and this is your information about a Topsy uh, database that it will maintain in this file uh, under the case folder for us as we move through the case if we as we add new data sources as we uh, generate reports create bookmarks, um, other other um, tagging uh, actions that we can take inside the case. Everything will be stored in here. So all, all our actions that will be remembered by Autopsy are going to be stored in this file. And so this is, uh, this is a actually a relational database. And here it's the question is how many, how, how, how big is the file? So you will be able to uh, to to find your information right here so this is our very very quick um, case creation and uh, examination of the content 
of course with the rest of the laboratory exercises we'll be um, examining other views and uh, of course all the details areas and uh, file information and so forth but this is the starting point for uh, autopsy exercises that we will be doing with the rest of our sessions.